The Winter Olympics are underway now in Sochi, Russia, but along with the competition, there's a serious threat of terrorism. For more, we turn to two key lawmakers, Michael McCall, chair of the House Homeland Security Committee, who's in Austin, Texas. And from Los Angeles, Los Angeles, Congressman Adam Schiff, a member of the House Intelligence Committee. Well, the director of our National Counterterrorism Center <clears throat> talked this week and gave a threat assessment of the situation in Sochi. Let's listen. The greater danger from a terrorist perspective is in the potential for attacks to occur outside of the actual venues for the games themselves in the area surrounding Sochi or outside of uh, Sochi in the region. And TSA banned all liquids, aerosols, gels, and powders from carry-ons on flights between the U.S. and Russia. Chairman McCall, you're just back from Sochi, and you say that the threat there is very specific and credible. Well, it is specific and credible. Let me first say I was watching the Olympics last night, and we're rooting for Team USA to bring home the gold, but we also want them to be safe and secure while they're over there. My experience was that this ring of steel, as Putin calls it, uh, the perimeter, uh, very fortified, uh, 100,000 security officers, uh, military, special forces. Uh, so there's a lot going on there, including our FBI, our Homeland Security uh, people over there, diplomatic security. But, Chris, there are two major threat vectors as I see it. One is to the aviation sector externally, into Russia, into Sochi at that airport, which is in the ring of steel. And the second uh, threat, as I see it, is a threat of uh, suicide bombers, these so-called black widows who are widows of of Chechen rebels who have been killed by the Russians, as we saw, you know, the most wanted pictures down there, uh, potentially uh, blowing themselves up or detonating explosives in transportation modes. And so that's what we have to be very concerned with. The Russians so far, I think, have been cooperative when it comes to external operations outside of Russia. When it comes to internal operations, I think less so. Uh, that's where we'd like to work more closely with them. Congressman Schiff, uh, from the intelligence that you have received as a member of your committee, how dangerous is the situation in Sochi? Well, there certainly are a lot of risks, but I think they're manageable risks. If people stay where they're supposed to, they don't uh, very often to uncharted areas, uh, minimize the time that they spend in train stations and uh, minimize the degree to which they demonstrate uh, where they come from. It wouldn't be wise, I think, to be broadcasting that you're from the United States. I think the, the risk can be contained. Uh, as Mike pointed out, uh, those risks are probably greatest in the soft targets outside of Sochi. Uh, and I think that to the degree that people are, are mindful of their surroundings, uh, I would go if I had tickets and, and enjoy the games. Uh, we aren't getting the kind of cooperation that we'd like uh, from the Russians in terms of their internal threats. I think as a matter of Russian pride, they don't want to share that. As a matter of not disclosing their sources and methods to us, they don't want to share that, but it means that we're less effective in protecting our people. And that's a frustration. But, uh, but all things uh, considered, I think that, uh, that it's relatively and manageably safe to be at the games. Chairman McCall, let me ask you a, a bigger question. Because after your tour of Sochi, you said that the Olympic Village, and this was your quote, is very well fortified. Is that what we've come to, that what was originally designed to be a, 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 an exhibition of international unity uh, now needs to be very well fortified? And if that's the case, what's the point? Well, I think any Olympics is going to have a certain risk uh, to it. I think this particular Olympics, I've never seen a greater threat, uh, <coughs> uh, certainly in my lifetime. We had the 1972 Olympics where the Israeli team was taken hostage. We didn't have the threats uh, warnings uh, in advance. Remember, we've already had two suicide bombers that have gone off outside uh, the, the Olympic Village uh, in recent, uh, light in December. You had the train station and, and the bus blown up. And I think, as Adam pointed out, it's the soft targets outside uh, the perimeter. I would caution people to stay in the uh, village uh, if they were there. I think what, what really poses the greatest damage or threat, if you will, uh, Chris, in, in my judgment, is the proximity and the location of where these games are being held. They're being held right dead center in the middle of what was, has been a historic battleground between Russia and the Chechen rebels that have now spun off into an Isla Islamic a radical military group. And so you had the leader of the Chechen rebels, 
Umar of calling for uh, attacks on the Olympics, calling for attacks on civilians, including women and children. And then Zawahiri, the Al Qaeda leader, the lieutenant of bin Laden, you know, for, you know, reinforcing that uh, threat. And so that, that's a whole new ball game that makes, I think, these Olympics a very, very different. I think that there's a high degree of probability that, that something is going to, some, something will detonate, something will go off. But I do think it's probably most likely to happen outside of the Ring of Steel and the Olympic I, Village. I, I've got to pick you up on this. You're saying, as the chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee, you think that there is a high probability that there will be some explosion outside the Ring of Steel? Well, I hope I'm wrong in this assessment, but you're talking about an area of the world where suicide bombers go off all the time. And the fact is, right now, Chris, the eyes of the world are upon these Olympics. And the Chechen extremists know this. And they want to make a w global statement. They want to make a jihad statement. And what better time to do it than right now? And that is, I think, the biggest threat uh, uh, to these Olympics. So remember, they don't have to hit in the Ring of Steel at the Olympic Village. As long as they, they hit somewhere in Russia, to them, that's a victory. Let me switch subjects on you because a lot of us found out this week about an attack on a substation, a power substation uh, in San Jose, California last mm. April in which snipers knocked out 17 giant transformers. Uh, Congressman Schiff, this happened in your state of California. How sophisticated was the attack? What does it say about the vulnerability of our electrical grid? And what can we do about it? Well, it was a sophisticated attack. Uh, there's uh, abundant evidence of pre-planning. Uh, the people that went in knew exactly what they were doing. They knew what they were going to shoot at to try to disable these transformers without blowing them up and attracting attention. They cut fab fiber optic cables in advance uh, to prevent telecommunications. So it was sophisticated. Uh, we're hoping that this was not a dry run, but that's obviously a great concern. And one of the thing I th things that I think it highlights uh, is we put a lot of our focus on cybersecurity, on the ability of terrorists to use uh, cyber networks to try to bring down our grid. Uh, and perhaps we've taken our, our eye a bit off the ball of less sophisticated attacks uh, that can be equally brutal or even more damaging. Uh, these, uh, a lot of these substations are in remote areas. They have nothing but a chain link fence and maybe a, a remote camera. Uh, and I think we, what we can do about it is prioritize those transformers, those substations uh, that would uh, bring the greatest threat to the grid, uh, protect those first. I think it's a limited number, probably less than 100, uh, and then branch out from there. But plainly, a lot uh, needs to be done and some finger pointing already going on between the various agencies as to who's responsible for security here. Uh, we're beginning to run out of time, and I want to get into one more subject, but very briefly, Congressman McCall, how concerned are you about this attack? Well, any time you have a, a power station under attack, both physical or by a cyber attack, and we just passed a cyber bill out of my committee last week, uh, a very, very grave concern because if the power grid is shut down, it takes a long time to restore that capability. And, and that would uh, mean uh, turning off power to large regions of the United States. So uh, we have to be better fortified from a physical attack, uh, but also, as my bill in, uh, demonstrates, from a cybersecurity attack, which could take down, uh, do far greater ja damage than Sandy did, for instance, uh, in the Northeast, shutting down power grids over regions of the United States. So this is a, I don't want to, you know, engage in hyperbole, but this is a very, uh, the critical infrastructures in the United States, both power, uh, both uh, oil and gas, both financial sectors, are all under attack in the cyber world. And there are physical uh, attacks, like you saw in California, that we need to do a better job protecting uh, the nation. Gentlemen, I want to get to one last subject, and that is Syria, because there were reports this week that thousands of foreigners, <clears throat> including as many as 70 Americans, have gone over to Syria to fight alongside uh, the extremists against the Assad regime uh, and may now pose a threat to the U.S. homeland. Here was a comment from the new Secretary of Homeland Security, Jay Johnson. Extremists are actively trying to recruit Westerners indoctrinate them and see them return to their home countries with an extremist mission. Chairman McCall, how big a threat? Uh, Americans and other Westerners being trained in Syria and coming home to carry out jihad? You know, I asked last week before 
his speech when we both agreed that Syria is probably the largest and most significant threat to the homeland security of the United States today. And the reason being is that we have so many jihadists pouring into Syria every day, training, they have training camps, military training camps. This is far surpassing the Fatah in Pakistan. This is becoming the worldwide training ground for terrorists. They're so concerned about Westerners, European, but also Americans who have traveled there with legitimate travel documents who could come back into the United States or in Western Europe with this kind of expertise, with this kind of training, uh, and pull off, you know, a, a, a terrorist attack. And let's not forget the external operations they have. Right now, their goal is Syria, but but after Syria, externally, they want to hit the West and the United States of America. Let me bring in Congressman Schiff. We've got about a minute left, Congressman. There's a growing sense that the Obama administration's international conference in Geneva isn't working, isn't going to solve the problem of Syria. Does the, do we need a reset in the administration's policy, one, to oppose the Assad regime, two, to make sure that they, they live up to their commitments, which they aren't at this point, of turning over chemical weapons, and third, to address this growing extremist threat inside Syria, and especially the idea of them coming home to the U.S.? Well, first of all, that growing extremist threat that you mentioned that Mike was talking about is uh, probably going to be the most pernicious threat to the country for the next 10 years. Uh, so it is a very serious problem. We're already seeing it in Egypt, where some of the jihadis trained in Syria are now attacking the Egyptian government. Uh, and, of course, they're trying to train people to attack us here on our homeland. Uh, in terms of the Geneva talks, uh, they haven't been successful. Uh, in fact, no one has been su successful here. Our policy hasn't. The Russians haven't been successful. The regime hasn't, the opposition hasn't. It's a bloody stalemate with horrific humanitarian uh, proportions, of, of horrible proportions. Uh, do we need a reset? It's hard to see what the reset will be. I'm not sure that the United States getting deeply militarily involved is going to contribute to an end to this conflict. Uh, I think we have to try to keep the pressure on with both a bottom-up strategy like we're seeing in Geneva, and more importantly probably is what will happen outside of Geneva, and that is we need to talk to the, the nations that are fighting by proxy in Syria, to the Iranians, to the Russians, to the Saudis, to the Turks, to the Qataris, uh, and try to uh, reach a resolution here. And I think the resolution is a Syria without Assad. He's not indispensable to any of us. There are goals we all want to see in Syria after the, the conflict, and they're not necessarily the same, but we don't need uh, Assad in power. Of course, there's no indication that Assad plans to go anywhere. Congressman Schiff, Congressman McCall, I want to thank you both so much for coming in today. Thanks, Frank.